This video is all about using the anti-power rule. So let's go ahead and refresh our memory on how we found derivatives. If I gave you f of x is equal to 4x to the third power plus 5x plus 7, and you take the derivative using the power rule, basically what we did was take the power, we multiplied it to the leading coefficient, so 12, and then we reduced the power by 1. So 12x squared plus when you see an x by itself, the power is 1. Take the 1, multiply it to the 5, reduce the power by 1. Basically, x to the 0 power is just 1. So the x to the 0 just isn't there, basically. And then the derivative of a constant by itself is just 0. And we really don't need to take the time to write plus 0. So the derivative of 4x cubed plus 5x plus 7 is equal to 12x squared plus 5. What we're going to be doing now is going backwards. If I give you the derivative, I want you to come up with the original equation. So that is called using the anti-power rule in integration. So right now, you're going to notice that we have this integral symbol. And I could ask you basically to find the antiderivative of 12x squared plus 5 dx because it is in terms of x. And this is basically the problem that we want to find. So this is how we go backwards. This is an integral. We're integrating. And so the goal is to come back to that original equation. So the rule when you're finding the integral by using the anti-power rule is that you're going to take, in this case, the integral of 12x squared dx plus the integral of 5 dx. So I'm going to take the 12x squared, I'm going to add 1 to my power, and I'm going to divide by that new number, which is 3. So this is going to give me 4x to the third power. Then I have plus, remember when the 5 is by itself and it has no x next to it, this is the same thing as saying 5x to the 0 power. So now I'm going to be adding 1 to that power and dividing by the new power, 0 plus 1 is 1. So I'm going to end up with 5x to the 1 power. And again, we don't really have to write that 1 power. Then, remember, the derivative of any constant is 0. So since we technically could have any constant added to this equation to make it true, I'm going to write plus c. This plus c stands for plus a constant. And in order for you to get your antiderivative correct, you must always take into account the fact that you could have a constant there. Without writing plus c for your antiderivative, you're going to get it wrong. So you must write plus c in your answer. So this means that basically my original function is going to be 4x cubed plus 5x plus c. And notice, if I go back to my original problem, that's exactly what we get. The only thing I don't know is that the constant is equal to 7. Later on in another video, I'm going to show you that sometimes they do give you enough information so that you can determine that in this particular case, that constant is going to be 7. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these examples. In example A, we want to find the antiderivative of 4 plus x squared minus 5x cubed dx. So when you have a number by itself, remember it means 4x to the 0 power. So if I add 1, then I'm going to get 4x to the 1 power, and you divide by that new power. So 4 divided by 1 is 4x plus, I take a look at the x squared, I'm going to add 1 and then divide by that new power, which is 3. So I'm going to write this as 1 third x to the third power. I go ahead and take a look at the next part. I'm going to add 1 to the 3, which gives me 4. 
divide the entire thing by four, and I'm gonna get minus five fourths x to the fourth power plus c. Because every single time you find the antiderivative, you have to write plus c. Okay, so now let's take a look at part b. Before I apply the anti-power rule, it's great to go ahead and change these into exponential form so that I do actually have a power. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of x to the 3 fourths power, because your index is always your denominator, plus x to the 4 thirds power, in parentheses, dx. So now to find the antiderivative using the anti-power rule, we're gonna go ahead and add one and divide by that new power. Three over four plus one means plus one over one. And if I wanted to have the same denominator, the denominator becomes four if whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So this is basically seven fourths. So this is gonna equal x to the seven fourths when you divide by 7 fourths is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this means 4 sevenths x to the 7 fourth power. I'm going to do the same thing with the next part. I'm going to take the 4 thirds, I'm going to add by 1, and then I'm going to divide by that power. 4 thirds plus 1 means 4 thirds plus 1 over 1. If I want my bottom denominator to be 3, I have to multiply by 3, so whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. This becomes 7 third. So I'm going to have x to the 7 third power. When you divide by 7 thirds, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is 3 sevenths x to the 7 third power plus c. And then that's going to be my final answer right here. In this example, it's interesting because I'm dividing by x to the 6th power. So before I go ahead and apply the anti-power rule, I kind of want to take the time to rewrite this. So I'm going to write this as the integral of 5 over x to the 6th minus 4x cubed over x to the 6th plus 2x to the 6th over x to the 6th dx. So what I've done first is gone ahead and rewritten every single part, every single term over the denominator, which is x to the 6. So now I'm going to either simplify by subtracting the exponents according to the rules of exponents, or I'm going to rewrite this so that it has a power. So the first part, I'm going to write this as the integral of 5x to the negative 6 minus 4 Remember the 3 minus 6 is negative 3, so 4x to the negative third power. And then in the third part, the x over 6 is cancel, so plus 2 dx. So now I can go ahead and apply the anti-power rule. The anti-power rule says that I'm going to add 1 to the power. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, and I'm going to divide by that new power. So here... If I do 5 divided by negative 5, it's just negative 1. So negative, I'm going to write the 1 so that you see it, but eventually you're not going to write the 1. So negative 1, x to the negative 5th power. Then let's continue with the second part. Again, to use the anti-power rule, you're going to now add 1 to that exponent, and you're going to divide by that new power. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by negative 2. So if I simplify, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is actually a positive 2, x to the negative 2 power. When I see the 2 by itself, remember that there is an x to the 0 power. And if I add 1 and divide by 1, then I'm going to end up with 2x. And then, of course, I must write plus c. So if I want to go ahead and fix this so that I have positive exponents, I can write this as 1 over, or negative 1 actually, sorry, because there's a negative. So negative 1 over x to the 5th plus 2 over x squared 
plus 2x plus c. And then this is going to be my final answer. Okay, so this next problem is actually fairly interesting. Notice what they give you is the second derivative, 2 plus x cubed plus x to the 6. And your job is to find y, which is the original function. Now, in order for me to find y, I first have to find the first derivative. So again, this means that this is the second derivative. My first job is that I need to find the first derivative and work my way backwards. So what I'm going to do is start by finding the antiderivative of 2 plus x cubed plus x to the 6 power dx. But that, remember, is going to go back 1. So that's going to give me the first derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the anti-power rule to this problem. And I'm going to get 2x. I think by now, hopefully, you're starting to get the hang of it. When you have a number by itself, it really is x to the 0. So plus 1 divided by 1, it becomes 2x. Plus, again, add 1 to the power, divide by that new number. So this is x to the fourth power over 4 plus add 1 to the exponent and divide by that power, which is 7. So plus x to the 7 over 7 plus c. So this right here, I can also rewrite it as 2x plus 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 1 seventh x to the 7 plus c. This is going to give me my first derivative. In order for me to find the actual original function y, I need to do this once again. So I'm going to go ahead and find the antiderivative of 2x plus 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 1 seventh x to the 7 plus c dx. So right now the x in 2x has a power of 1. I'm going to add 1 and divide by that new power 2. So then I'm going to get the 2's cancel, x squared. In the next one, I'm going to add 1 and then divide by that new power 5. So 1 fourth, if I have 4 in the denominator and 5 in the denominator, that becomes 1 over 20 and then x to the fifth power. Then I'm going to add 1 and divide by 8. So in the denominator, I have 7 times 8, which is 56. So this becomes 1 over 56 x to the 8th power. The c, remember, represents a constant. So I can go ahead and make this c x, right? Because a number by itself doesn't have anything next to it. So it'll be x to the 0 power. And then because I can't put plus c again, I'm going to go with the next letter in the alphabet, and I'm going to write plus d. And what this is going to give me is my original equation. So this is my final answer. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.